Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take the global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies this morning. And joining us to review the papers is Chris Kende Wandu. He's a chartered arbitrator in the UK, but he's joining us here in Lagos. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Young Bilonia CK. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I knew you wouldn't let it lie. <laughs> People are now shopping for sugar daddies and sugar mommies. <laughs> it's now a legal thing because if you if you need three square meals in Nigeria, you, yeah, you you need to just look for extra oh, help, goodness. ATM. That's what you need. <laughs> no more relationship now. Oh Lord, I can't concentrate. Uh, I understand that I'm a young billionaire here looking for one too. <laughs> <laughs> well. Mm. Let's meet at the supermarket. You guys should meet at the supermarket. Uh, how much can I afford? Will it determine whether you are a young millionaire? Well, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we go shopping, we'll know that. Yes. Anyway, okay. let's move over to the papers. We're starting with the Vanguard this morning. And it says, anxiety as pump price of petrol raises towards 1,405 naira per liter. Well, the writer here says, Costing template shows landing, landing price at 1,205 per liter. NNPCL already overwhelmed by subsidy. Marketers give conditions for participating in importation. New official pump price expected this month. And a Dangote refinery concludes fuel refinery um, plans. And finally, commuters pay higher fares. So a lot is going to happen in this month, or a lot has started happening. I mean, it started with the scarcity, the long queues, um, people cannot, you know, commute anymore. And then even if you have to, you're paying a higher price. I mean, I used to buy fuel for about 600 naira per liter or 619, and now we're buying for about 860 here in Lagos. In other parts of Nigeria, you're seeing, you know, you're seeing the price go as high as 1,200, 1,500. But now, if the landing cost is 1,200 and we're going to pay 1,405, what does that even mean? Because that's almost like double. It's a September to remember. We've oh. entered, <laughs> we've entered Ember months. Ember. That is, that is like double the price that we're we're supposed to be paying in Lagos right now. 1,405 per liter. What is going to happen in the next few months? I want to get your take on this and how you've even been faring with the whole fuel price and fuel scarcity at the moment. Well, this is nothing new. It's a story foretold. Um, we already knew that it was going to come to this, despite the denial by the uh, by the at the uh, at the NMPC as it is, uh, and um, all the lies the media. Yes, you know, we always have this saying that um, for you to, uh, if you tell uh, one lie, you need another 99 to be able to defend it. Mm. And that is what is, if you understand what I mean, yeah. you tell a lie, you need another 99 to defend it. And that is what is happening. Um, what, has been, what is happening now is a, a story foretold a uh, long time ago. And it has been coming, we've seen this coming. Um, and we knew that one day the chicken will come home to grow. Um, look at it from the point of the lies that have been told by the NNPCL, uh, which is the major importer of petroleum in Nigeria. Practically, they import over 90% of the petroleum products. Let's even take the la this last one. When this issue of stress scarcity started, the NNPCL, as usual, as usual, came out to tell us that, oh, we have enough story. We have over 60 trillion, 60 billion, and 60 million liters of uh, petroleum products across were in our storage. So there is no problem. When it persisted, they now said, oh, it was due to a logistic problem. Oh, logistics, we're having issue up with logistics, but that will be sorted out within 24 hours. Then after that, they had an, an alibi. Uh, and now said, oh, it was due to the end part government uh, governance protest. That's happening about two, three days' time. Uh, we know that in the next few days, we sorted that. But they knew they were lying to Nigerians. They knew they were lying to Nigerians because right in front of the NNPC uh, tower in Abuja, if you know Abuja very well, where the NNPC tower is, the central area, in front of that building is a petrol station directly opposite that building. I've lived in Abuja for several years. Directly opposite there is a petrol station. 
once you as a first scarcity is from that petrol station, you know that there's first uh, uh, um, scarcity in, in, in Abuja. And the NNPC AGL, GMD, which is executive directors and others, they will see from the 15 tower, 15 plot towers where they are and see the long queue going on there. And they'll continue to tell you um, that, oh, there's no first question. They continue to see it themselves. But let us also even take it further. A few weeks ago, Rata, uh, the, uh, uh, there was a story, a, a Rata, you know Rata, the, uh, the, uh, yeah. the international media um, uh, outfit, did a publication where he said that the NNPCL was owing suppliers about $6.8 billion uh, in debt. What did NNPC say? They came out to deny that. Story. So no, it's not true. But a few days ago, they, they ate the humble pie. But the most ironic part of it is that this same NNPC here, about last week, declared three trillion naira profit. Mm -hmm. So how can somebody that is owing somebody $6 billion declare three trillion naira profit? So those are the things I'm, so those are the lies that have been going on. on this. I mean, so why I say that this was a story for two. We've said this in over close to 20 years now, that except we fix our refineries, this is where we're going to get to. And now, NNPC here, uh, choose this same GMT, that I don't know why the president is finding it difficult to sack him. I want to believe that it's this man that sponsored President Bola uh, Ahmed Tunubu's campaign. Because if he's not the one, I don't see any reason why he's sticking this man here. Now, this man told us last year that by December, the Potako refinery will start working. He shifted the ghost post to January, February, April, June, July, and at the end of it all, at the last count, it was it has shifted about six times. The last one he said was August. Today is September third, and there's no result. And you still have somebody there as the hem up. So this is a, a story foretold. Um, the a little uh, progress for us is the fact that Dangote says it's going to start bringing down his petroleum product. But the question you have to ask yourself: Does Dangote have enough food oil to be able to? Roll out. You remember the problem that has been having, where you have to start sorting out for crude oil from Brazil, from US, and the rest. Of it. I've said it and said that this country is too rich to be poor. Nigeria has turned itself to a big elephant with clay feet, and it's not because of our doing, but because of the kind of leadership we have. And we continue to go on this track. You're asking me how I'm coping. The same way you are coping, my sister is where I'm coping. I try to cut short my movement where I cannot be able to make it to. Well, I start to sit down and do my things online and rest. It even got back for me to, from day back when I was also attacked on traffic um, in Lagos at 10 a.m. in the morning by robbers because there were fewer, uh, fewer queues on those, those roads were blocked and we were being attacked. And I was one of those that was attacked a few days ago on traffic in Lagos. Oh, that is how bad Nigeria is. I'm so sorry about that. <clears throat> well, you survived it. Uh, you were saved and uh, we thank God. Yeah. Um, but some of those people who were on the streets may, may have been good citizens like uh, one year ago, uh, but right now they can't feed anymore, so they are, they are resorting to a crime and all that. But we hope that uh, that will be cleared. Um, now we're looking at another one, uh, the renewed Naira depreciation. That's a, a very small, tiny headline there on the Vanguard. Renewed Naira depreciation begins as market turnover falls 25%. We hear that the Naira is uh, still above 1,500 Naira to a dollar right now. And I don't know how we're going to survive this. Well, I'm not trading in dollars. So whatever they like, let them do. What is more important to me is that I want to be, go to the market and make sure that I can be able to purchase yam, beans, rice, uh, tomatoes and lights. Everything is what connected, you know, Chris. Yes, I know. Yeah, I know. I, I, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm going to. What I'm saying in essence is that the basic problem facing Nigerians now is that of food. And except we address those issues, then we are going to run, we are running into problem. Yes, it's connected, but I don't need dollars. I don't need dollars to be able to get yam in the market. Yam is produced in Nigeria. Um, uh, tomatoes is produced in Nigeria. 
this is produced in Nigeria to a large extent. They are all very expensive now. Yeah, because, most of them yeah. will tell you it's the dollars. Yes. Because I want to sell my yams to buy shoes that I bought mm -hmm. by with dollars, so yeah. I'll have to sell why it at the price. Why would you buy shoes? Why would you buy shoes? I buy? Why can't you buy a bandit? What are you doing with shoe that is done with the last? Chris, can't, why can't you buy? We are looking. Chris, <laughs> we are looking in what? We are looking in what? Eh, Chris. We are looking in what? I what stop you from buying a jewelry? I, 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 I need to buy. I need to. The jewelry you're talking about. Yeah, it's yeah, so expensive. Yes. It the, is the expensive. Yes. The materials they used to do. Yes. A lot of these things are imported. Um, so is this no, interconnectivity? The, the whole machinery that they use to even produce mm -hmm. the yarns and all right. of that. Everything is expensive. I, I, want, I want herbicides right. for my farm to produce the right. yams. And the herbicides are imported. imported. They are not done in Nigeria. So I'm only pulling your legs. We know the truth. I'm only pulling <laughs> your legs. We know the facts. I'm just pulling your legs. Yeah. What is the part is that we know what the problem is. There are three different um, basic policies that we are initiated by this government. That was, to me, uh, a sense of reality, senseless. One was the removal of oil, uh, petroleum subsidies. Now we are even being, we have been told that there was no removal because we are even paying more now for subsidy than it was in 2023. Two was the floating of the, um, the, uh, the, the naira, as it were, against the dollar or foreign currencies. We say that everything was stabilized. I was watching your. Your, your first um, segment mm -hmm. where you are talking that oh, they say it is going to stabilize. In fact, there was a point at then they say, oh, it has stabilized. You remember that time it got to yes. 19, uh, 19, mm -hmm. 900 naira or 1,000. So they say, oh, it has stabilized. Mm -hmm. This is what it's going to be. Before you knew it, it had gone to 1,400 and now it's about 1,600. So those are the policies that we are, that we are not well thought out by the government because any single uh, is, a, is, is like a chain. Once there's a disconnect in a particular point, the bicycle cannot move. That is what we are facing now. And very, very soon, we are not even selling enough in, in terms of crude oil to be able to make, because for you to be able to make an exchange, then you must be able to export. That is the only solution to it. You must export more. That is where you earn your money. If you don't export more, then that's a problem. The serious challenge we are having is that still on this oil sector, where we have, which is about 90% of our foreign exchange, are you aware that our food had been sold in advance and they have collected money in advance mm -hmm. for those food? You remember, the, you remember that yeah. narrative? Yeah. So what they are doing now is just be able to supply those that we've collected loans from billions and billions of dollars. So those ones we've collected the money in advance and our government has spent it as it were. Now what we are just doing is just servicing those. Things. So we, don't even, we cannot even sell as much as we want to sell to be able to make profits. Those are the issues facing Nigeria now. And that is why you ask yourself, how can NNPC be owing supplier six billion dollars? So the petroleum product they collected, didn't they sell it? And if they sold it, why didn't they pay those that they collected, the, 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 the suppliers? What happened to the six billion? Those are the issues we should be talking about the narrative. Now we have it, we have it in good authority, on good authority that we have five vessels loaded with petroleum product Talk at the port now. You know the problem? They are, ready, they are not ready to discharge those petroleum products because they feel that NMPs will not be able to pay them because of the high, huge debt they are owing them. That is why we are having this serious problem on the issue of petroleum. That is what is happening. A week ago, the government released $300 million to be able to mitigate, to help NMPs. But that is just a drop in the ocean. $300 million from $6 billion. That is those issues are talking. So when you're talking about issue of um, uh, uh, dollars, if, and if we stop importing petroleum products today and we are selling crude, most of those money we are using to buy this um, uh, petroleum pro product will be domiciled there and we'll be making a lot of uh, money from the sales. If our refineries are working and we are not importing petroleum products, then we have enough money and that's so. It is just a simple, I'm not, a, I'm not an economist, but it's simple, it's just simple arithmetic. So, what do we do the needful then? And I continue asking myself, the president has gone to China, when he's landing at the Apuja airport and driving through that um, Shehu, um, Shehu that road, going to Adu Villa, and he sees that long queue of fuel, what does he feel as the president of Nigeria and also the minister of petroleum? That is the question we should be asking the president. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
All right, well, let's move over to The Guardian. Oh, sorry. Um, I'd like this very sensitive one. Presidency denies alleged frosty relationship between Tinubu and Shatima. Is this uh, a peak of what is going to come? Well, I don't know how peak it is, whether it's a peak or the blue. But in fact, I also read that story. But it was a statement issued by the uh, special assistant to the uh, vice president of media and publicity. Uh, where you're saying that um, there have been this insinuation that the president and the vice president have been having some kind of uh, uh, skirmishes and uh, they don't seem to see eyeball to eyeball. And he's trying to deny it that it's not true, that they're having the best of relationships. But you know, there's no smoke without fire. When this kind of story start coming out, you know, there's something which is, I don't know where it's coming from. Um, according to the report, they said that the uh, president is not giving uh, the vice president enough uh, room to or prayed or whatever. But I've been seeing, I, I think I've been seeing more of Shetima than even the president. The VP Shetima is practically everywhere, everywhere you see him. So I don't know where that is coming from. I don't know where the first relationship is. It is good that this presidency is coming out to deny that. It's just one year into this regime. They have about three more years to go. So whatever is the problem between them, I think they should be sorted out. But I want to believe the presidency uh, that there's no problem. But as I said, there's no smoke with that. This was how the problem started with Atiku and Papa Sanjo in those days. And they were denying and denying. At the end of it, all we saw what happened in the later, um, later years of the gym. But I hope that they will just sort out whatever their problem. I don't know what the problem is. But I want to believe the president in saying that issue here. Let's just watch and see what's happening. Okay. All right. So if we move over to The Guardian, it talks about um, the Southeast states and it says sit at home, insecurity, secessionist agitations, dip, um, foreign directive investment trade in South East states. So we know that, you know, in the East, uh, insecurity has been rampant, especially with the sit at home on Mondays. But the fact that now it is affecting the foreign directive, um, foreign direct investment, I want to get your take on this because of course, we need as much revenue as we we can get in Nigeria as a whole, and then of course the southeast states. But looking at this, the fact that this insecurity and the agitations from these people are causing this dip um, with the foreign direct investments. Um, that, that report could be true. Um, for a long time, there have been this kind of skirmishes between the southeast and the issue of insecurity in the southeast has been a problem. You several people, especially for those of us from the south, that we at a point we find even those of us from south is finding for going home and because we don't know what will happen next. Mm. But taking it for the, uh, I don't think that we have the level of insecurity in the south is compared to what is happening in the north present. If you see the level of killings and um, uh, just how many few days ago, 150 people were abducted in Sokoto State, until now nobody has said anything about uh, about them. They've not been released. I've never seen that number of people abducted in the southeast in recent time. It's not possible. I've seen the killings and the, also recently the attack on soldiers in also in the north, where the two armor vehicles were also hijacked by ragtag um, bandits, and those um, were set on fire. I've seen instances where um, the, uh, in Sokoto State, where an emir was abducted killed just by uh, collecting um, uh, um, the ransom. And I've seen, uh, so when you talk of insecurity, the, 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 the highest level of insecurity is in the north presently. And I've not seen that level of um, agitation I'm talking about the issue of direct, uh, foreign direct investment. The, the, I will tell you for free that the situation in the south is really, really improved in the last few months. Very, very you, uh, Most people don't stay at home on Mondays again. Uh, if you go to certain states like Enugu, Apia, Ibo, people move around on Mondays and they seem to have um, taken a, a black line um, kind of uh, social. So the improvement, I'm not saying that it's total, but you also notice that in the last few months, I don't think you've seen the, the those stories that you used to read about on unknown men and on unknown yeah. government mm -hmm. adopting and killing people in the southeast. That the level of security in the south is are really improved. But if, when you're talking about the security, even across board, even in the southwest, south south, we will be seeing that head level of insecurity as well. So, but I believe that we can still be, we can do more. The security agencies can do more in giving back uh, confidence to uh, uh, to people that they can come out and go about their normal duties, so that this level of uh, 
foreign direct investment in the in the south is can be proved. But let me tell you for free, most of the investment in the south is, is not from foreign direct investment. Igbos have been known for their own self-help efforts, and that has always been the right from when I was a kid. The first uh, the first uh, private um, uh, airport in Nigeria built by a state was built by self-help in Owere, Imo State. We, have, we, uh, we contributed, our fathers there, our fathers contributed money to build airport. And the same thing with so many other things. But I think we can do more. We can, they can do more. Um, uh, but the level of insecurity in South East, I can say that for free, has really improved. If, whether it can get better, yes, it can get better. And that in itself should be able to make the issue of attracting foreign direct investment in the state. Uh, in the state of the South is very, very necessary. But uh, insecurity has been preached presently in the South is not as bad as it used to be. It can be better, but uh, I, I think there's been a lot of improvement in the past few weeks. Okay, uh, to politics now. A PDP says we cannot above party as disciplinary committee issues summons. Uh, all of us have been wondering why Wiki is still in the PDP, and no, nobody seems to be saying anything. It's just now that they're talking about disciplinary actions being uh, to be carried out uh, on him. He is even threatening governors, sitting governors, that he will put fire in their states mm. if, they, if they don't keep quiet, uh, if they keep Maybe. talking about uh, mm. Fubara and supporting him. Fubara is a sitting governor, and he's threatening governors of other regions even, that he can do and undo. And I wonder what is really the legal implication of removing Wiki uh, or disciplining uh, him. He's a former governor, he's a minister right now, but it seems as if he's above the law, not only for PDP, or but, but the entire country. Yeah. Because if someone will come and threaten that I'll put fire in your mm -hmm. state, you, imagine if you, uh, Chris, said that, made that kind of statement. Is this dis not the same as the person who said it was going to, she was going to poison the people that are from mm. uh, south, east, southwest and all that, uh, far away in Canada or something like that? So, I don't know. We case seems to be above the law. Let me tell you for free, my brother. All the so-called leaders in PDP are weaklings. And I use the word weaklings in capital letter. Because if they are not weakening, then I can't see why one single individual can be muzzling um, an entire party made up of um, how many governors do they have. I think they have about close to about 14 or 15 governors. I can't remember now. And uh, apart from that, they have former governors, they have former ministers, they have whatever. And somebody will just sit down in Abuja and threatening them. And they cannot do anything. Uh, in Yoruba, that is what is called Atenuja. If you know, if you know the Yoruba language very well, Atenuja means. A situation where because of what you go chop, mm. don't let you talk through. And you know that if you understand me, that local fire. Yeah. Because in the past they've been able to collect so much from PK. And um, you saw them when they went the, the party uh, uh, the PDP NWC went to um, um River State few few weeks ago, where they, they they were able to profess their solidarity for Fubara and that they would stand by him. And the governor said, Okay, that after seeing you now, I'm well reassured that I'm a member a member of the party. But just last week, just last week, that was a, 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 a what is it now? Um, uh, what do they call that? What they call it? Uh, uh, local government or con uh, whatever they have in a river state. state. Um, BDP. Yes. 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 But my, I the BDP had a, 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 a Congress. They had a Congress in the river state. And we are, we case pretended that was lambasting the governor lambasting. The first and you have to ask is that, my brother, if you own a house, and somebody thieves come into the house. The first thing you do is to start defending yourself before you start shouting and calling your neighbors to come and assist you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the man they are talking about is the governor of River States, doesn't even have a voice, cannot even do anything. So what do you expect from the outsiders? He, this fight we must start from him, with him, as a sitting governor. This is an elected governor who knows less nothing about politics that he cannot even stand for himself. I will just sit down in the state. You can't do that in certain states. Look at the phone of Basiki as, 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 as a political novice as it was. When a, a consul like um, Oshomele tried it, when, when he was uh, uh, always a governor, what did he do? He ran after social media out of town. It happened in so many states. It happened in New York State. It happened in Abia State. It happened in so many states. As a governor, you have an overwhelming power to be able to take up the challenges and take up uh, uh, 
um, the reign of power in your state. But the guy is just behaving like a uh, one stupid uh, person that cannot even voice himself. He asking me. Amen. So that is the situation. For the PDP, uh, they said the NWC is meeting and they have somewhat weak. Let's see what they're going to do, what can come out of it. But the fact remains that nobody is above the law and nobody can be above the party, more than the party. This party was not funded by yesterday. If he is joined, he has funded it for some time. There were 30 people that came together to form PDP in 1998. And that party, in the name of those funding fathers, Yes, of Wiki's name is not. If you go into the CS or wherever he was registered, you will not find Yes, of Wiki's name. So they have the right to discipline him and be able to, if uh, at all, even suspend him from the party. I know he has been going to court. You know, he got, went to court to get an injunction that he should not be suspended. But I believe that if PDP want to redeem himself as a political party, this is the try, right time to slam the, um, the hammer on the person of it. So that will ask as a deterrent to the others. But if they continue to be, behave like uh, little boys that have some candies in their hands, then there's nothing they can do. But mm -hmm. this is the time. Let's see what the Kimi uh, committee is going to do, what they are going to recommend. Let us even assume that it, it may not, Nelson Wike, whatever it's what may not even work. Is it not obvious that Nelson Wike is not in the empire of PDP again? He is there to destroy here. I think he's out to destroy the party and probably move to another party. Because you saw the role he played in the 2020 election, where somebody who is a governor, a sitting governor of a state, came out to say that he will not support the candidate of his party in the presidential and work against it. You are a member of the party, you still went ahead to collect or uh, take a, a, an appointment from, uh, from the APC and saying that it was the president that you believe in, the president you believe in, and you're not a member. Even within the APC, they are not happy that the role that Mika is playing within the government, they don't like him being in the government of. President um, Bola mentioned most APC people as well, the top echelon of they are not happy with uh, with next uh, week and the role is played in the in the government or the press. But that one thing you cannot take away from this week. If he's given a job, he doesn't is one of the high flying ministers under this government. Go to Abuja and see what is the effect and what he has been able to achieve in the past month. But for him to be playing anti party politics, that is one thing I cannot stand. And I think it's high time that PDP come out. Categorically to make a statement with Yens of Wiki. So as to add as a deterrent for somebody to say, I'm going to put fire in other states. That is a high level of responsibility in terms of statement mm -hmm. by anyone. And all of them are sitting down there watching like a, a zombie as it were. Yeah, it's a very careless statement. On the point, it leads with PDP governors, Wiki may clash as NWC, that's a National Working Committee, meets on Wednesday. Here it says, um, neck pressures NWC to hand over Rivers PDP to Fubara. PDP governors will address ministers threats at meeting, says Forum DG. So hopefully um, this is being addressed and if he needs to be suspended, well, he should be so that um, other people do not come and make such careless statements again. Well, this is where we have to... There should be suspending. They should be suspending. They should spare him. That's my personal opinion. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We'll, um, you know, follow up on the story. This is where we have to wrap it up on this segment right now. Chris, thank you so much for coming. Always a fun time <laughs> reviewing the papers with you. Thank you so much. We meet at the supermarket. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> 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 Have a wonderful day. <laughs> <brother. laughs> you too, sir. <laughs> All right, we've been speaking with Chris Kende Wando. He's a chartered arbitrator in the UK, joining us here in Lagos. And we've just been taking, taking the global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be discussing the petrol scarcity that is set to worsen as NNPCL admits $6 billion debt. Please stay with us.